Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. I am Astrath, and I welcome you to this. Konami Presents... Uh, Konami Computer Entertainment Japan also presents at the same thing. <laughs> Yes, folks, welcome to Shonen Jump's Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monster Coliseum. Uh, made by Konami for the Sony PlayStation 2. So, uh, this game I did uh, I did a video of, I believe, for a New Year special, something like that. Um, and I've, I've been playing this game a lot recently, and I'm really enjoying it. So, I thought, you know what, let's do a Let's Play of it. Why not? So let's do a, a campaign mode and get into Tutorial Dump! Because the game has one, in the form of Yugi Moto. Great. You know, we have this, this, this here. Lovely film grain. Great. Welcome to Capsule Monster Coliseum. Thank you. Why does everything have smoke in it? Why is there a film grain filter on? You're just in time for the big tournament, for the film grain. Nothing but film grain. That is really bad film grain. <laughs> Just saying. Capsule Monster Battle Tournament, sponsored by Film Grain, the best thing in the world. Ah, Film Grain. Oh no, Film Grain's still there. Never mind. Yugi Moto and his alter ego, the Film Grain Man, which has, which has been trapped in the Millennium Film Grain. The puzzle. But a Film Grain. Well, at least we know what the first part's gonna be called. We'll use their wits and monster capabilities to defeat all their opponents to go against the final boss, the Film Grain, and then. Probably lose because the film grain is undefeatable. As they fight for the title bestowed on only the best capsule monster coliseum fighter, King of Film Grain, the capsule monsters. Bloody film grain, man! That's so bad. Like, what's the point with the film grain? Film grain just makes things seem older, and not even well either. Just saying. So the film grain has definitely retreated, yep, all the way back to the uh, the final boss of the game. That is, uh, that, So we know our final boss is going to be the film grain, because film grain was everywhere in the first bit. But no, no, we're not going to see the film grain again. There you go, no film grain. Film grain's in that volcano right there, just daring us to go against him. Bloody film grain. Submit entry, enter name. What I do like about this game at least is, look at all those characters that we've got. Look at all those characters, like, loads of characters. I could put in the entire name of this channel, and I'll probably still have a few left. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, this looks pretty good already. Um, A, M, I, N, G. Yay, there we go. Uh, fine. We're never going to be using versus mode. Okay, so, for a build start, play with the preset settings by selecting Purchase Starter Kit. Select Build Custom to create your own original arrangement. I'm going to for Build Custom because, sod it, why not? This is going to be a long video anyway, because there's a lot of tutorials at the start of the game. But regardless! Also, loading screens are a bit of a problem. They don't even, well, they sometimes put loading. Anyway, create a symbol! Yay! The symbol attribute affects all of your monsters. Select an attribute that will give your monster an advantage in battle. So we have a choice of dark, fire, water, earth, wind, looking good so far, uh, wood. Really? Not plant? You're just going to go with wood. So dark plant is a tree now, not a flower. Never mind. Thunder and light. 
So, um, I have been, uh, wondering, like, which one I would pick. Um, for my first sort of run-through, I picked fire. Uh, because, well, fire's awesome. What can I say? You know, you can, you can impress ladies with fire. Why not? Just not in the form of being an arsonist. But anyway, anyway. Um, and then I thought dark, because dark does turn up quite a lot in this game. Uh, but I'm actually going to go with light here, because dark turns up a lot in this game, and light takes out dark, so... Or light beats dark, so, yeah, why not? We'll go for that. Alright, create our symbol now for our little statue thingy. We have a fiend, horn, fairy, ring, palace, wing, tower, needle, and back to fiend. Do you know what? Since this one's spinning around, I kind of like this one, so I'm going to go with ring. And the color for the ring. We can pick purple, ash, pink, wood again. Damn it, wood. Stop turning up. Green, platinum, cyan, or onyx. Seriously, it could have just been black, purple, gray, pink, orange, or brown, green, white, and blue. They could have just done that. We are going to go with um, mm, cyan or onyx. Hmm. Not sure. Well, Mass Draft colors are blue and yellow, so we might as well pick Cyan here, which is the closest one we get to that. You must assign all these points, so we have points now. Um, all these points have specific things that we can do. First off is Monster Points, MP, uh, which is pretty much your currency to buy monsters to uh, help you out. This is not like the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. It's a completely different beast, this one. Uh, the AP is the health of your, uh, of your uh, little statue here. And PP is PP. Uh, power points, I believe. So let's let's put a little bit in PP. We really don't need much in AP, to be honest. So let's actually put... I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put 75 into PP. We'll put 75 into AP. And then we'll put... Fi or, or into MP. And then we'll put the last 50 into AP. We'll do that. There we go. Now we have like 100 health. That's very nice. Anyway, enter! Yes, we are ready. I am satisfied with the settings. Thank you very much. A word like satisfied. Hmm. Yes, indeed. And now, the game! <laughs> Wait a minute, you're not the film grain. Why are you laughing at me like that? Grandpa! But Yami Yugi, that is not your grandpa. Your grandpa is your Egyptian grandpa. This is Yugi Moto's grandpa, not your grandpa! Just saying. Ah, I thought you would come, Yugi. What are you doing? I knew you wouldn't have prepared anything. You're always so impatient. I brought monsters that you can use in the tournament. That's my grandpa. No, it's not. Hold your horses. I never said I was giving you these for free. I'll exchange them for monster points. Monster points? You can earn monster points by winning during the tournament. Keep winning to get more and more. But I haven't battled even once yet. But didn't you just create a symbol? That gave you monster points. Use those to start with. Let me give you some tips. Monsters can be separated into light, dark, fire, water, earth, wood, wind, and thunder. Guys, like Grandpa forgot. What was after dark? It's like dark. Uh, no, no, f f fire, fire. Film grain. I was in film grain. Well, that's gonna be on a bleeding T-shirt in the next few years. I'll tell you that much. Film grain. Anyway, moving on. In other words, each monster has a different attribute, and each attribute has a different advantage and disadvantage. I'll explain what they are, but. If you don't think you can remember them, I suggest you take notes. Because some of them don't make sense. Are you ready? Here they are. Light is strong against dark, and dark is strong against earth. Fire is strong against wood, and water... And, and wood is, water is strong against fire. But there we go. I've done it for you. Earth is strong against thunder. And wood is strong against wind. I keep cutting in too quick. 
But yeah, you, you get it though. Wind is strong against water, and thunder is strong against light. That's it. If you remember these relationships, it will increase your chances for victory. So some of them make sense. To be honest, some of them do make sense. Um, earth and thunder, fair enough. Uh, thunder and light, eh, kind of pushing it, but it's okay. Light and dark makes sense. Dark and earth, no idea how that makes sense. Wood and wind, don't know how that really makes sense either, when wind can take out things like trees and stuff, but regardless, it, it's fine. Uh, wind against water, don't understand that either. Water, fire, fair enough. Fire, wood, good. So really, fire, wood, good. Yeah. Uh, so really all i got to remember is wood beats wind, which is easy enough because I played Rishia for Destruction and had a similar mechanic. Wind and water is going to be a tough one. And then dark and earth and, and uh, thunder and light. Those are the ones I'm going to have to try and remember. But anyway, let's, uh, let's carry on. So only having monsters of a single attribute is dangerous. That's my grandson. You learn quickly. However, you should always take your opponent's attribute into account. That's another important point to remember. Well, the rest is up to you. I understand. Can you show me the monsters? So here are our monsters here. Buy a monster, at least 10. We have 625 monster points that we got from our uh, creating our symbol, plus the extras we got for our symbol. So we do have ones of all specific types. There are 34 monsters altogether. We will get more later on in the game. So there we go. We have things, uh, and pretty much with their monster points, uh, they become stronger uh, the higher the monster points goes up. Like, for example, Skelengel's attack is like 101. Uh, Fiend Reflections is 100. Uh, Fiend Reflections is 104. Uh, but he's also got more AP and more PP. And more defense, actually. So, Fear Reflection number two might be actually a pretty good option. Feral Imp is also very good. I think Feral Imp's the strongest monster we've got. Or the, high, the one with the highest monster points. And usually, the higher the monster point, the better the monster you're going to get. So, yeah, Feral Imp at 102 is the strongest with an attack of uh, 85. Well, uh, an AP of 85 and an attack of uh, 117. So, not too bad. Um, so yeah, we're going to want to get a few here. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy three water types to kick things off. That's a fair amount of our stuff gone already. That's not very good. Uh, we're also going to get two thunder types, two light types. We're probably going to go for Skelengels here because I do enjoy playing a Skelengel pretty well. Uh, one dark, I guess, because, well, Feral Imp. Is too expensive at this point. We're going to skip the fire ones because we don't need them so far. And uh, we'll go for two Lavas. Two Kiramas. And we have enough for two Petite Moth. No, one Petite Moth. Ah, well. I think we still did all right there. So we missed out on our fire types. And there is a reason for it. Uh, which it will come with our first opponent. Which will be fine. But there you go. We just bought like some uh, some random stuff. Now we can go into the areas. Area one and battle our first opponent, Mr. Joseph Wheeler. Jump in, Joey Wheeler, the godfather of games. Let's go. Let's do this quickly. Shouldn't really take too long. Well, actually, probably will. As I said, this is probably going to be a long video. But sod it. We'll, uh, we've got through most of the tutorial. There's still a lot of it because uh, Yugi Moto hasn't turned up yet to tell us the rest of the tutorials that we are, which I already know. But then again, I'm going to let him speak anyway, because sod it. Yeah. Gives me time to drink some water, at least. That's a plus on this hot day. Again! It's like three months of this so far. It's awful. Hiya, Yug. I've been waiting for you. Joy! The one and only. And don't think I'm going to take it easy on you just because you're my friend. I'm not holding anything back. Then let's get started, Joy! And with that, the battle begins! So, uh, this game has a sort of like a similar mechanic, you could say, to uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of the Roses, or chess, if you want to go that way. So first off is choosing our attack order. We have eight cards to choose from. This is pretty much random luck. You pick a card, and the higher number on the card gets to choose who goes first. And it's me, because I got a six and Joey got a four. So we get to pick who attacks first and who attacks second. 
I'm going to pick first here, because I, I don't really see any reason why you'd want to go second. You know, you want to get your you want to get your monsters out on the field quickly. That's what this is all about here. So, here's uh, here's Joey's here, lovely uh, fire thing, and as you can see from these uh, from the symbols on these capsules, he has four fire monsters. So he did not heed Grandpa's advice, which is fine, I guess. And I believe they're all fire reapers. Anyway. Okay, I'll select my monsters to play with. Wait a sec. Oh God. What's wrong, Yugi? There's a limit on which monsters you can use, which is determined by monster points. You mean the points I paid in order to get monsters? Yeah. Each stage has a set limit of monster points. And the total monster points of the monsters you use cannot exceed the limit. I see. That means if the monster point limit of the stage is 100, then I can use 10 monsters that are 10 monster points each. Or I can only use 5 monsters if they are 20 monster points each. That's right. So you have to think carefully about the balance of which monsters to use. Okay. Thanks, Yugi. Thanks, Yugi. He's gonna get so annoying th probably throughout this entire video. Anyway, regardless of monster points, we are going to want to pick our water types here because Joey Wheeler has his, um, he has his fire type, so we're definitely going to want to be doing that. Uh, when it comes to everything else, we're probably going to want to pick our strongest stuff, so probably two Kiramas, maybe? Yeah, let's do that. So, as you can see, our monster point amount was, uh, 200, uh 270 that we could take, uh, which is fine. Um, so, yeah, you got, you got to, uh, get a specific amount of monsters. You could probably, like, have, like, one massive monster. If you want to do, but then you can only attack once with it per turn, and it just becomes horrible. Um, our maximum deployment is six, so we can only have, at the most, six monsters. Luckily, we only have five, so that's fine. Let's begin. Right, let's place our symbol somewhere. So we want to be as close to Joey as possible. So Joey's over here, so we are going to want to be probably at the back here. There we go. Yeah, look at that, how awesome that looks. All right, now our method of placement. Uh, we can do manual, or we can do uh, we can do it, uh, like just any way we bloody want to, really. Uh, I'm gonna do it for this moment, but usually I will just put them in random places. So we're gonna want our uh, we're gonna want our water monsters high up here. Okay, so as you can see, they all have like different attacking patterns. Especially Jesus Christ, Kiramas is a very odd pattern. Interesting pattern, though. But yeah, each monster has its own attack pattern, which is uh, well, very interesting, actually. Um, so sometimes it's not just the type and the power your monster has, but also how well it can attack. So it's time to get into the game with player turn. It's time to start. Indeed. Hey, in order to move your pieces, you need AP. Damn it, Yugi. I see. Each piece has a set requirement of AP, and if I move it, then the AP on the screen decreases, correct? Yep, and if you don't have enough AP, then you can't move your pieces anymore. So I have to be careful about the amount of AP when thinking about how to move my pieces. Uh-huh, but first, you can't move anything if you don't summon monsters from your capsules, so you have to choose which monsters to summon. You're right. Okay. Alright, so yes. First off, you have to release the monsters from the capsules. So let's kick off with a good old root water. To kick things off. And I'm going to end my turn. Because that's the only move I can make. I, I was going to say something then, but I know that Yugi's going to say it later. Alright, Joey. What have you got? I believe he's got like four fire reapers. That's his, that's his deck, pretty much. Well, that's his team. Yep, yeah, that's a Fire Reaper. That's another Fire Reaper. So Joey has the advantage right now. He has one extra monster released than I do. But it's going to take him a while to get over here, so I can release all my monsters from the capsules pretty well. I'll tear down your defenses. Hey, right now you saw the AP increase, right? What? Yes, you are correct. No, he didn't then. Where it says AP on the screen, there's a number with a plus sign next to it. 
Yes. This number must be the amount of AP that increases on my turn. Yeah, and if you summon a monster, it'll increase. That means either I move a summoned monster or I summon so that I can move more pieces. That's something I need to think about. It's important to make a decision based on the situation. Yes, well, for my turn, I'm just going to summon everything. Go, White Dolphin. Come out and kick ass. I'm going to summon Psychic Kappa as well. Come out and kick ass. And I'm going to summon a Kurama as well. Come out and kick ass. Yeah. And that's the end of my turn. But now I can get like 287 AP for the next turn, which is pretty nice. It allows you to move your characters. You really are going to want to summon your characters first before you move them. I think even uh, Joey has the right idea. Never mind, he doesn't. He's leaving one in a capsule. I'm not sure if that's really a good idea or not. Because now I can release my last Kurama and uh, pretty much storm him. So go, Kurama! All right, so now movement. We have 243 AP to move. As you can see, each monster has its own sort of movement and attack pattern. So Psychic Kappa can move only two spaces, can't move one space in any direction, which is pretty nice. And it can attack, um, it, it can attack linear stuffy, so there you go. That terrain is not good for your piece's attribute. If the terrain is unfavorable, then its ability decreases. But if the terrain is favorable, then the ability increases. Yeah! You can check by looking at your piece's ability. I see. Then, I should be on the same terrain as my attribute as much as possible. It changes depending on the situation, but it's worth remembering. Thank you. Right, so, moving on. This is favorable terrain because water! Common sense! Doesn't have to be explained that much, at least. White Dolphin can actually move five, uh, three spaces and can attack one extra in sort of any of these angles. That's pretty good. Uh, Root War, I think, is the same, only can attack two. Yeah, so it can attack the same amount as it moves, which is pretty nice. And Kurama can move in diagonals, three spaces, and can attack in any of the uh, angles to the sides of it or uh, in front and behind it, which is pretty nice. So already we are storming Joey's... Uh, Joey's, Joey's, Joey's team here, which is pretty nice. He's probably going to summon his next Fire Reaper now. Yeah, should have it last turn because he would have got that extra 10 AP. Anyway, Fire Reapers can be a problem because I believe they can move to and attack to. But we're fine. Also, this can sometimes happen, which is the arena changes. Joey's not happy about it because water. Ha <laughs> ha. Go, my pieces. Yay. Didn't really help too much. What? You can't be serious. This can't happen. Well, it just did, Joey. I'm afraid you're about to lose. Because I have my water dudes ready for action. So, 300 AP. That's the max we can use here. And I can move straight in with White Dolphin and attack my first uh, Fire Reaper. For a lot of damage, you can see 190, 161, which is nearly enough to beat him. Right, we show the battle animation once and then we won't use it for the rest because... It just takes too long, but this is what it looks like. So, go, White Dolphin! Come on out, White Dolphin, even though you look more like White sh Shark. With Horn. Attack! Horn! White Narwhal destroys you! And deals a fairer quantity of damage. 161, not too bad. 13 health left. And we gain some experience. Ah, this sucks big time. Indeed it does, Joey. So, next turn. It's time to destroy that Fire Reaper now with Root Water. Root Water attacks with Water Rooty Attacky Smash. Destroy! And we'll turn off the battle animation for this one. But there we go. Down goes the Fire Reaper. 13 damage is more, is just enough to take out the Fire Reaper. We have no idea how much damage that would have been, actually. Less, you... Which is a bit of a shame, but oh well. Alright, so, Kirama, you're up. I'm going to move you over here for the moment. You're zigzagging your way, which is fine, I guess. And you, Kur Kurama, also zigzag your way. Zigzag. And last but not least, we'll move Psychic Kappa. Uh, over here, I guess, for the moment. And end, and that'll end my turn. So we were able to beat one of his Fire Reapers. Pretty nice altogether. I ain't 
gonna lose. Yeah, Joey, you are gonna lose. You're against five monsters. Uh, and at the mo oh, you are attacking White Dolphin for 69 for 63 damage. Sorry, 63 damage because I am on an advantage. That's my motto. Then let's get started, Joey. Indeed, for 63 damage. And White Dolphin has 225 health. You're gonna need to do more than that. I hope he's going straight in again. This time with his second Fire Reaper. Not sure if that's a good idea, really, because I do have a lot of monsters that can come along and crush you. That's fine. He's moving his uh, symbol. You can do that and move your symbol. He seems to be keeping one at the back for some reason. I won't which is um, interesting, I guess. All right, my turn. Kurama, what can you do? Nothing of worth. Actually, really nothing of worth. Fine, go over there. Go over there, Kurama. Okay. So, we have a second Kurama here. We have Psychic Kappa. Psychic Kappa can move over here, which is pretty good. And strike this Fire Reaper. Take that. Nice. Right, my White Dolphin is in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, ain't looking good, Joey. Uh, yeah. He's in a bit of trouble here, but I'm going to kill this Fire Reaper first. Just to uh, lower your defense a bit. And that's a... That's, well... Root Water is a team kill is a team well uh, is a kill stealing git at this point. But there goes the second Fire Reaper. Just two to go. Uh, okay. It's the bottom of the ninth. Two out. Yes, baseball! That's not gonna help you, mate. Sorry, Joey. Alright. We can move again and we're gonna move here. Because we need to. We need to move here and attack. We have to move here and attack because as much as we could have we could have him stay in the water, the Fire Reaper can uh, has better range than we do. What? So, that is obviously a bad thing. Last but not least, Kurama moved to where the formerly dead Fire Reaper was, or was close to being anyway. So there you go, end my turn. Right, Joey's turn. He's got one nearly dead Fire Reaper, one not dead Fire Reaper. That's now coming into play against Kurama. It's going to do a lot of damage to Kurama because there's no advantage or disadvantage. He might actually go for the kill on Kurama here. Which, uh, on an honest note, I would not mind. Yes, your monster will not fall. Uh, is he? He's actually, yeah, he's actually going to destroy Kurama here. That is fine. So, actually what happens here is when one of your monsters is destroyed, um, when one of your monsters is destroyed, uh, it's like a Fire Emblem mechanic or like a Roguelite mechanic where it doesn't come back. You're doing better than I thought, Joey. Yeah, and you go back to the start. But to be honest... From. It's Kurama, so I can easily sacrifice a Kurama for victory. Also to save White Dolphin as well. Anyway, once again, Joey is getting screwed here, because here comes more water! More water for me, and not Joey. More water to save my ass. Go on, water. Fire up the... There you go. Yep, yeah, take that, Fire Reaper. Now you're over there and you're in trouble, good sir. Okay, my turn. So I still have my three water monsters, which is very good. So, we're obviously going to want to do our first move, which is destroy this Fire Reaper. Goodbye, Fire Reaper! And that's a kill there for White Dolphin. White Dolphin's been really good so far. Very good. Just how how much White Dolphin can move is just great. Alright, Psychic Kappa cannot attack, I don't think. Actually, No, he can't attack. He, he will need to move again. Damn it, Psychic Kappa is not very good here. At all. Kurama can attack! Pretty nice. So let's have a Kurama attack! Attack Fire Reaper! Nice one from the second Kurama there, the one that's still alive, that is. What? No. Yeah, Joey is pretty much one hit away from death, because there are two ways from winning this. There are two ways to win. The first way is to destroy all your opponent's pieces. The second way, uh, I'm just going to end my turn here. Uh, the second way is to destroy your opponent's symbol. Uh, your opponent's symbol does have its own health. Uh, which is fine. Right, you're going to attack, you're going to attack Kurama. That's fine. I can take a hit like that. And Kurama's going to get the kill. Either that or Root Wall is going to bloody take the kill instead. That's all the damage you yes. The monster will not fall. Indeed not. He can survive that. He can survive that all day. And the final turn will be made by me. Uh, and it's going to be... Uh, 
Not Psyche Kappa, because Psyche Kappa's kind of bad, but we'll move him over here for fun. Better get your symbol out of the way. Uh, Sonic, let's give the kill to Kurama. Kurama's done pretty well here, so let's give the kill to Kurama. Nice. This will finish you. Indeed it will. Victory to Yami Yugi. Victory to me. <clears throat> Take that, Joey. And we have destroyed his final piece. Ah, it's all over. Indeed it is. Victory for us in our first battle. We lost to Kurama, but that ah, well, we could probably buy another one at some point. And anyway, close to Yugi's face. Victory player! Best thing ever. <laughs> Victory player. Not just you win. Never mind. I lost, Yugi. But Joey, you fought valiantly. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did. Maybe that's why I don't feel that bad that I lost. Now you, don't you be losing any other duels, all right? Of course, I won't let you down. And with that, more experience for Kurama. Why not? And we won. We lost a piece, but ah well, it was a it was a Kurama. We have a better Kurama who actually survived. Anyway, with that, we get some monster points that we can buy probably another Kurama with. 200 clear points, 14 special bonus, and 214 altogether monster points. Very nice. And we got some clear bonus experience. 18 experience that goes to everything, including my symbol. Very nice. Once a monster gets to 100 experience, it will you can give it a chance to level up. Very nice. Also, we can select two capsules that our opponent had to take with us. That's why I did not take any fire types. So we'll just take two fire reapers here. There we go. Thank you, Joey. Hey, Yugi. What's wrong, Joey? There's something I forgot to tell you about this tournament. There are five opponents in each area. And if you don't beat them all, you can't move on. That means... I just defeated you, Joey, so I have to defeat four more opponents. Right. And if you clear four areas, a whole new path opens up. A new path? What's that? <laughs> like I know. Well, just keep winning. And maybe it'll all make sense later. So keep at it, buddy. Thanks, Joey. That's exactly what I'll do. Yeah, beat their butts. See you later. A new path. I don't know what the new path is, but we're traveling on our own road right now. No matter who we face on this road, we must win, and we'll do it together. Yeah! Pass me a bucket, please. Bloody friendship speeches! Oh, you've been hanging around Tear too long. Anyway, we'll save our game data here. Uh, but I am going to go for a break here since this is uh, like a 30 odd minute episode. As you can see, that's my current, uh, my basic save, so yeah. Anyway, we are going to save here, but the next episode, folks, of Let's Play Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monster Coliseum, we're going to be taking on our next opponent. So I'll see you then.